Well, that took quite a few kidneys. Right, let's get started. Fujifilm's GFX lineup started in 2017 with the GFX 50. That was followed by the 50R, 100, 100S, and now the 50S Mark II. Wait, this is the 50S Mark II, that was a 100S. See, even if you leaked the 50S Mark II before launch, nobody would have believed you because it's literally got the exact same body as the 100S. It is actually a problem trying to physically distinguish between these two camera bodies. The only tiny indicator is on the flap that covers the mic and headphone jack. The 50S Mark II has its name printed on it, and if it just says GFX, then it's a 100S. If you happen to lose that flap, then it's whichever camera you believe it to be. The Mark... Two really is just a sensor swapped 100S. Just take a GFX 100S, then replace it with the sensor of the GFX 50. But being the doppelganger to the 100S means the 50S Mark II shares many of its merits as well, including the fact that it's a medium format camera with the footprint of a full frame DSLR. And while that does make the 50S Mark II sound as simple as a 51 megapixel version of the 100S, the sensor swap does cause a ripple effect that changes its overall capabilities. Most noticeable perhaps is the continuous shooting speed. The 50S Mark II tops out at 3 frames per second, while the 100S could manage 5 per second. And just like the original 50S, your RAW files are 14 bit, but on the 100S, you have the option to do 16 bit as well. Video isn't a particular strength of the 50S Mark II either. 1080p at 30 FPS is as much as you get. I'm almost certain that these are the technical limitations of this particular sensor and not Fuji trying to cripple the 50 in favor of the 100s. And I'm saying that because we have seen the sensor before along with its capabilities. All that said, it does sound mildly uninspiring to think of this as a downgraded version of the 100S. This is, after all, a successor to the original 50S, so I think this certainly deserves to also be looked at alongside the camera it replaces. The form factor has certainly evolved rather gracefully. The screen no longer bulges out, which has always made the Mark 1 seem awkwardly thick for a mirrorless camera. And while the Mark 2 does weigh less, it's not exactly by a meaningful margin. It's about 15 grams lighter. The Mark II takes the newer and smaller yet higher capacity W235 batteries, same kind that the X-T4 uses. It takes it in the grip now instead of a hatch on the left side of the body, which I always found kind of odd. Speaking of the grip though, I do personally prefer the original 50S. It was a bit deeper and had better thumb support, but the Mark II's grip is, I assure you, not bad by any means. The classic shutter speed and ISO dials on the Mark 1 are also no longer on the Mark 2. Instead, you've got a single mode dial, which literally has 60% of its slots dedicated to custom modes. And that's a good thing, actually. I promise you that was not meant to sound like a complaint. The Mark II's EVF is also no longer removable, which was on the Mark 1, and that allowed you to tilt the EVF using the rather expensive TL1 accessory. But here's the big win for the Mark II. In-body, IS, and it's a mighty fine IBIS too, I might add. I was getting sharp handheld shots at 10th of a second exposure times on medium format using an 80mm lens. This is for sure the biggest upgrade over the Mark 1 in my opinion, and IBIS typically comes with a bonus feature on GFX cameras, and the 50S Mark II is no exception. This gets pixel shift mode for quadruple the resolution. If you'd like to see pixel shift in action, I highly recommend checking out this video here. Now, autofocus on the 50S Mark II is still using contrast detection, so AF performance is not going to be as good as the GFX 100 and 100S, which use phase detection autofocus. That being said, it does feel like the autofocus has a slight but noticeable improvement over the original 50S. Image quality is very unsurprisingly similar to the Golok 50S, same sensor after all, but it's the same excellent sensor. You do get to pull a different look out of it though, with the newer film simulations that you wouldn't find on the Mark 1. The Mark 2's got all the latest ones, including classic negative, eternal bleach bypass, and also nostalgic negative. The beauty of this 50S Mark II, however, is how full-featured of a medium format camera you're getting for just $4,000. For a medium format camera, that is considered an incredibly affordable price point. When the original 50S launched back in 2017, 
2017, it started at $6,500. So the Mark II's launch price is almost 40% less than its predecessors. So if anyone was wondering how far Fuji could push the accessibility of medium format, this is probably it. I suppose you could order a 50S Mark II and pray whoever packed it put a 100S in there by mistake. 